Good morning and welcome to Freedom Baptist Church of Chesapeake. The sun is shining this morning. It's, it's cold outside, but at least the sun is shining. We've had so much rain the past two weeks that I am thrilled to have the sun shining and just brightening up our day. Well, this morning we're going to be talking about a mystery. Some people like mystery novels and detective shows and, and their attention is captured as they try to figure out who it was that uh, did the crime or caused the trauma for the, the story. And yet the mystery that Paul is talking to is not that kind of mystery at all. In fact, God's mysteries are truths that are ordained from the foundation of the world, but which were not revealed until he chose to reveal them at just the right time. The Old Testament saints looked forward to the coming of the Messiah and the Deliverer. And God even revealed in the Old Testament scriptures that the Messiah was going to suffer and die. But the Jewish people failed to grasp these truths. It was God's plan down through the ages to bring Jews and Gentiles together into one body in Christ. Yet that was incomprehensible to an Old Testament believer. And this morning, Paul, Paul introduces us to a delightful mystery a mystery from the deep wisdom of God that only the Holy Spirit can reveal. And we have the Spirit of God. I enjoy mysteries. I like mystery stories. But I especially enjoy a mystery in which I can benefit. And this is that kind of a mystery. And I hope you're as excited to learn about this mystery as I was excited to learn about it, something that God has in store for you and for me. Let's read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 6 through 9, and we'll learn about this mystery. Now remember, last week we finished up with verse 5 of chapter 2. And Paul says that he wanted our faith not to stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Paul is continuing this discussion and continuing this uh, encouragement that our faith would not stand in men's wisdom, but in the power of God. So let's see where he goes with this. He says, how be it? We speak wisdom, or we do speak wisdom. Remember, Paul's been talking about the wisdom of God being foolishness with different individuals. For those who are being saved, the gospel is the power of God. But for those who are not being saved, it's foolishness. And yet, wisdom in this culture, in the Corinthian culture, was a very important concept. And Paul says, we do speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Now, don't get caught off guard by that word perfect. We'll talk about that. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. See, that wisdom in these princes, these leaders, will eventually come to an end. They will fade out of the picture. But we speak the wisdom of God. You see, God's wisdom is eternal. It's lasting. He says, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Wow. Which none of the princes of this world knew or they didn't understand it. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. 
This is a mystery, all right, but it's a mystery revealed by the Spirit of God that can be an encouragement to our hearts, something that we can't comprehend in our natural selves, but something God has revealed to us. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for revealing these truths to us. Lord, I pray that you will work in hearts and in lives. I pray for that lost person, that you will draw them to yourself, that you will help them understand that Jesus died for sinners, that he was buried and he rose again the third day, proving that his death was sufficient for all sin of all mankind. And Lord, I pray that today will be the day they will truly understand the gospel and trust in Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And I pray that you will encourage believers to be excited and thrilled about what you are doing in their lives. Bless our study today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Go back to verse 6. He says, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Now, this is a term, this word perfect is a term that can mean complete or perfect or even mature. And some of the newer translations actually translate it as mature. It certainly does not mean sinless perfection, as some people might conclude, but this Greek term could also mean some, refer to someone who was fully initiated into a group, someone who was a member of a particular group. And I think that's how Paul uses it here. I think Paul is referring to those who are genuine believers, those who have become uh, joined to Christ, so to speak. So Paul is clarifying that the wisdom that he is giving is something for a genuine believer. He says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. This is not something that was previously revealed, but it's something that now is going to be revealed. And yet, it is not from the wisdom of this world. This isn't table talk wisdom. This isn't the kind of wisdom you're going to learn by sitting around the kitchen table and chatting. It's not popular wisdom that you will get standing around the water cooler or even in tweets or posts. This wisdom is different from the wisdom of this day, this age, or what may seem intellectual or smart, or who can be learned, what can be learned from those who are intellectually gifted. My wife and I enjoy watching Jeopardy, and these people show an uncanny ability to remember facts of all different kinds, and yet that's not the wisdom that Paul is referring to. You can't get it from a talk show or from the evening news. This is God's wisdom. It's wisdom that Paul says is not the wisdom of the world, nor the princes of this world that are passing. I mentioned earlier whether it's a leader or someone who has a talk show or someone who may seem very, very smart to this world, that person eventually will pass away, will fade from the scene. And yet the wisdom that he's talking about is lasting wisdom. He says, we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Now that's a fascinating statement, unto our glory. Remember what Paul says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23. Many of our Awana children can quote this, word, this verse. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's one of our dilemmas, is that we fall short of God's glory. We cannot measure up to God's glory. And yet this wisdom 
that was hidden and now being revealed is for our benefit. It is unto our glory. But it was misunderstood in the past. Notice what he says here, which none of the princes of this world knew or understood it. For had they understood it, had they clearly understood what they were doing, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. To whom is Paul referring here? Well, he's obviously referring to the leaders who crucified Jesus. In Matthew chapter 27, when Pilate was examining Jesus, he received a message from his wife. Don't have anything to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. She warned Pilate, and yet what did Pilate do? Pilate didn't let Jesus go. He goes out with a basin of water and rinses his hands and says, I have nothing to do with this man. And the Jewish leaders cry out, let his blood be upon us and our children. None of them truly understood what they were doing. And when Jesus was dying upon the cross, he prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And yet God was clearly at work. I love the words of the psalmist in Psalm 118. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. They crucified the Lord of glory with crooked, wicked hands. And yet, notice the play that Paul uses here. He talks about the Lord of glory and the truths that are being revealed are being revealed unto our glory in verse 7. Don't miss that play on words here. But look in verse 9. He quotes the Old Testament. He says, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Oh, that's glorious. Now, Many people misquote this verse, or misapply it, I should say. They quote it and say it's talking about the eternal glories that are ahead for us as believers. Well, the eternal glories are truly spectacular. But what is Paul talking about in this context? He's talking about the wisdom of God that's being revealed unto our glory. He says, I can't understand, ear can't understand, neither the heart of man understand the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Paul uses that same terminology over in Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Uh, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Oh my, this is, this is amazing. But I want you to, don't miss this, okay? We cannot grasp this wisdom by empirical observation, by studying through a telescope or a microscope, by examining medical things, we can understand many good truths. God has gifted us with minds that can grasp beautiful things, very important things. And yet, all wisdom, all knowledge is lacking when it's not seen in light of the Creator. Don't miss that. We can truly understand spectacular things. And with our minds, that the, when it refers to here the, the heart of man, it's referring to that inner part of our being that examines and understands things. We cannot grasp these truths on our own. It requires someone else. And now Paul is going to talk about that person. 
beginning in verse 10. He says, But God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, or examines all things, yea, the deep things of God. You see, the Spirit of God understands things that we cannot grasp on our own. I love the the way that John MacArthur identifies three categories of the Spirit's ministry in our lives. Revelation, God has revealed himself through the Holy Scriptures. Inspiration, God inspired the writers of Scripture when they recorded Scripture. And then finally, illumination, God opens our understanding. He helps us grasp spiritual truths through the ministry of his Holy Spirit. Now, we know from 2 Timothy 3.16 that all Scripture is inspired by God. It's given by inspiration. And 2 Peter chapter 1 clarifies that nothing is of any private interpretation. No scripture is of any private interpretation, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So God has revealed himself through the inspired scriptures and he illuminates our understanding through the ministry of his Holy Spirit. So God has revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? So he's using a metaphor, a picture. He's saying that you may think you understand somebody else, even your spouse, but you don't truly understand the deep things of their heart because you don't, you're not inside of them. Only the individual can understand the deep things in our souls. And he points out that even so, the things of God knows no man but the Spirit of God. So that's why it's important for the Holy Spirit to reveal things to us and to help us understand spiritual things. Because we cannot grasp on our own. Now, you may think that you have God all figured out, but you'll be disillusioned because that is merely an illusion. God has revealed himself in his word, and we are dependent upon his Holy Spirit to understand these spiritual truths. I love Deuteronomy 29, 29. And as we get ready to go into verses 12 and 13, I want you to remember what Deuteronomy 29, 29 says. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. Now, this is an important principle. God hasn't revealed everything to us, but what he has revealed to us has been gifted to us. But God never gives us spiritual understanding merely for information. He always gives it for application so it can impact our hearts and our lives, so it can impact our daily living. Now, notice what he says in verse 12. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know or grasp the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak not in words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. This too is an important principle for us, that we need to compare 
spiritual things with spiritual. Now, I know some of the newer translations mention spiritual individuals, and and that's a, a true element of God's wisdom. And yet what I think Paul is really talking about is exactly how the King James Version highlights it, that we need to compare Scripture with Scripture. We need to compare spiritual truths with spiritual truths. None of Scripture stands on its own. All of Scripture is part of the entire canon of the Bible. And so it's important for us to compare different passages so that we can better understand these different passages. Scripture helps us understand Scripture. But look at verses 14 through 16. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discern two things here the natural man will not receive the things of the spirit of god why because he cannot grasp the things of the spirit of god no even salvation is an act is a ministry of the holy spirit and he helps a person understand the message of the gospel in order for him to believe the gospel. So uh, a natural man in and of himself can never come to a right conclusion about God. It is only through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I want to pause and, and just make a point here. That does not mean that individual scholars cannot understand Stand technical things about the Bible. No, many scholars can study the Bible for years and even grasp many important literary, linguistic, and textual truths and never come to an understanding of the gospel. The gospel remains foolishness to them because they do not have the Spirit of Christ. No, you can understand technical things and never come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. In verse 15, it says, But he that is spiritual judges or examines, discerns all things. Now, that doesn't mean that every believer will understand every truth and there's no need of teachers and things of that. No, God has gifted the church with pastors and teachers who do that very thing, who teach and help us understand spiritual truths. But what it is saying is that a person who has the Spirit, they can examine and discern all kinds of things and come to a spiritual understanding of those things. And yet, notice the next statement. Yet he himself is judged or truly understood of no man. So, even the believer who can grasp these spiritual truths, a person who is not a believer can't figure him out. They can't understand why they trust in the Lord, or why they live for the Lord, they simply can't figure it out because they do not have the Holy Spirit. And then he wraps up this section. He says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? There is not a person who has ever been living other than the Lord Jesus Christ who can understand the mind of the Lord. Only the Spirit can do that. The third person of the Trinity, the Spirit of God, can understand the, the mind of the Lord. We can't give God counsel. We can't tell God what to do. Many people try to do that. They try to speak and make God do certain things. But that's not scriptural. That's not biblical. Only God has the wisdom to do what's right 
And we don't have that privilege. And yet we have been given a gift. He goes on, but we have the mind of Christ. In other words, we have been given the Holy Spirit, the mind of Christ, the one who discerns the deep things of God as a gift to us. Do you want to have wisdom today? Do you want to have spiritual wisdom? Then I need to first ask you this question. Do you know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior? See, if you have never trusted in Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, then you cannot understand the gospel. You cannot understand even simple things rightly without relating them back to our Creator. You can be smart according to this world's wisdom and yet remain foolish in God's wisdom. I encourage you today, turn from your sin and receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you have a desire to understand this better, then I encourage you, go to our website, freedom-baptist.org, and at the top there's a link. I, I believe it's titled Good News, and it'll take you to a page that talks about God's good news of salvation. And you can learn more about what it means to trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Are you a genuine believer? Then God's wisdom is available for you. Don't feel like you are a second-class believer or a second-class uh, Christian. No, if you have received Jesus then His Holy Spirit has been given unto you. You don't have to wait for a second blessing or some kind of an act of the Holy Spirit. No, if you have Jesus Christ, you also have His Holy Spirit. And He will teach you and lead you and help you understand God's truth. The ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives involves the revelation of God. God has revealed himself through the Holy Scriptures. It involves the inspiration of God, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit led these spiritual individuals as they were recording the Scriptures. These holy men were moved by the Holy Ghost. But finally, the Holy Spirit illumines our minds. He gives us understanding so that we can know and understand spiritual truths that we cannot grasp apart from the Spirit of God. You see, God works through His Word in the lives of His believers. So let me encourage you to get into the Bible Read it, study it, memorize it, hold it dear to your heart, and grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for revealing this mystery that has been hidden in the past, but now has revealed since Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. This mystery that is in the gospel. Lord, I pray for those who are watching who have never trusted in Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. I pray that today will be the day when they will come to know him and trust in him as their personal Lord and Savior. And Lord, I pray for every believer to be encouraged and challenged and hopeful because of the ministry of the Holy Spirit who is working in our lives to help us to see and understand the truths that only your Spirit can reveal to us and help us grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And I ask all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.